Welcome back to Just Blazer, it's Kareem Blanche, and today I'm going to be discussing why you need Blazer. Now, we're going to just dive into it already. I think Blazor has a lot of potential in the .NET space, especially if you are already a .NET developer. It is something to look forward to because not only is it the thing that's going to compete against JavaScript, you know, the most, <laughs> that has the greatest monopoly on front-end frameworks, it is also something that Microsoft has been doing a lot of investment in. And in this video, I'm going to be discussing what exactly those investments have been and the prospects of this new language. So let's begin with the first thing is that it's easy to understand. Now, normally when you want to learn like uh, to do a full stack development, that's what I do. I'm a contractor and I like doing full stack stuff. I think that those get you better contracts. I think they make you more flexible and allow you to leverage a lot more technologies. Now, you don't have to be like me. You don't have to be that um, well-rounded. You can just focus on .NET stuff. As a .NET developer myself, I usually focus on .NET technologies, whether they are in the front end, the back end, or in the database. In this case, Blazor will be taking over for one of my, you know, from learning JavaScript, because regardless of where you go, if you do want to be a full stack developer like myself, then you will have to understand uh, JavaScript to some degree or learning one of the JavaScript frameworks most likely the more popular ones like React, Angular, Vue.js. However, uh, when you want to learn Blazor, especially if you're coming from the .NET background, you already have a lot of the tools necessary to understand it, and it's not as difficult as, let's say, Angular. Angular has a lot of moving parts, a lot of new things you have to understand that isn't comparable to what you already learned when you did you know, C Sharp or when you came from Razor. Blazor, on the other hand, takes a lot of what makes Razor, if you're coming from that sort, um, you know, work, but stream streamlines it a lot better. And I believe also makes it much easier to understand. Now, if you're coming from the other side, if you're someone who, you know, let's say has done JavaScript development and you understand React or Angular, you know, the use of components and how it's very component driven. Blazor also follows under that same purview and uses components in its in its framework. So you won't be very lost there. However, since it does rely heavily on C Sharp, if you don't know how to you know, program in C Sharp, it will be very, a lot more difficult for you specifically. But this whole video is just to, uh, it's basically for the people out there who want to understand Blazor, whether or not they should go into it, and who would this be valuable towards? I think it will be the most valuable towards uh, people who are coming from a .NET background. However, if you're just starting out, Blazor is also probably one of the easier languages to understand. Um, assuming you already know C Sharp. If you don't, it might be a little bit of a grind, but I do think that it is still much easier to understand that than let's say Angular or React because they both have their own complexities. Angular in the sense that it's a giant thing that's out of the box and it's a lot of stuff to learn at once, while React is not a lot in the box, but you have to start finding other libraries to make your project work the way it wants to. So it's very um, multifaceted. And if you don't understand how, you know, those libraries work and stuff and what to look for, then that's where the whole issue comes in, in learning it. So Blazor is a little bit of um, in between where if you already know C Sharp, it's going to be an easy time for you to learn. But if you don't, then it might be a little bit harder because C Sharp itself is an object oriented programming language. And that's a lot different than the scripting languages that JavaScript is going for. The other reason why I think Blazor is a good language to learn is because it is still a niche language. Blazor was created in 2018. And going into 2022, it's still not, you know, super mainstream. Now, its counterpart, Razor, is still what's being mostly used in the .NET space. So that is still, you know, the bulk of the, if you're using, you know, full .NET tech stack for your application, you're going to be using something like Razor, or you're going to be using something like Xamarin. But going forward, Blazor is going to be the thing because it is expected to do more than just front-end development work, which I'll get to in a minute. And... The case of it being uh, in the case of its growth potential in .NET 5, that's when Blazor came out and .NET 5 did something interesting. It combined both the .NET Core app standard library and the normal standard library together. So now anything coming from .NET 5 going forward is going to refer to that one, you know, convention, that one library. And Blazor came from that. Blazor is a part of that uh, from .NET 5 going on. And in .NET 6, I believe they added some features because of how Blazor works. Blazor is more or less a sandbox in the browser. So a lot of APIs might cause issues with it, specifically coming from the NuGet packages. Or a lot of APIs and NuGet packages and, and classes might not work for Blazor very well. Now, I don't think this hinders the Blazor language too much. 
because it is meant for front end development mostly if you want to use something for more server side uh something more server side code then you would probably do that although blazer does support server side code it is still something to note and it's still something that can cause complications when you do development but i don't think this hinders uh blazer's ability to be a, a viable front end language and to be a competitor against javascript i'm just pointing out because that is what it was in the dotnet 6 um uh new updates for blazer but this tells me that microsoft is heavily invested in blazer which brings me to point number three that microsoft is heavily invested in blazer now microsoft has a long history of keeping their products alive for as long as possible if you don't know what silverlight is i don't blame you silverlight is one of their uh older you know a front end thing front end, I, I call it a thing at this point because i used it and i hated it but they kept it alive for over 14 years and it was was never going to compete with anything modern and then they pulled the plug on it back in 2019 so from i believe if i look at this real quick 2007 to 2019 that's when they kept this really old piece of technology up not only that but you see examples like c sharp and net as a whole they've always been updating it and you know keeping up with uh anything else they might need or any small form of support for it obviously the oldest thing microsoft is probably known for is the windows os and they've you know that's that's their bread and butter that being said i believe blazer is also going down this path because uh product man their asp.net pro program manager daniel roth has written a little blog here that talks about the what blazer is and the future of blazer so blazer is meant to do more than just front-end development in c sharp it is actually meant to be used in creating native apps or hybrid apps as well so it's basically supposed to be taking the place of xamarin in the future and it is supposed to be taking a similar role to as react native it's going to try to compete against that as well so i think they're trying to really uh make blazer very ubiquitous when it comes to what kind of apps you can work with it um there's also progressive web apps as well so they're kind of like hybrid apps except they are just in the they just provided more native like experience except they use web standards so if that is something that interests you then go you know go for it but if not then you know they have a lot of intentions to grow the blazer language and have it more uh used in other frameworks apart from just a web application so that is, I think, the biggest thing that comes with understanding and learning Blazor and why you should learn it as soon as possible. When it comes to niche languages, um, learning it early is probably the being early adopters get you the greatest rewards because you will be the senior much earlier. So if you were to adopt Angular now, you would need maybe five years for you to be considered a senior. If you if you were to learn, let's say, um, uh, uh smart contracts it only take you maybe two or three years for you to be considered a senior because they haven't been around that long if you want to learn blazer for you to be a senior it just came out in 2018 so you could be a senior within two or three years considering um of course you also have to learn c sharp as well because blazer is c sharp essentially so there's a lot more to it than that but there's always potential with niche languages especially those that come from uh corporations that are willing to invest the time and effort in them and according to this i think that it's very very positive when it comes to the future of blazer and that's why i believe you should learn it right away now do i believe that they're gonna get rid of razor in favor of blazer someday but probably not right away i don't think i think that they want to have blazer more adopted uh more heavily adopted in the mainstream before they pull the plug on razor but I believe that is the direction that Microsoft will be inevitably go to. So if you're out there and you want to learn Blazor, this was my video on why you should learn it. There are many reasons, but the most important ones, yeah, let's wrap it all up. The most important reasons why are going to be that Microsoft is uh, supporting it and it's going to continue supporting it according to the program manager here. They are, it is a niche language. So niche languages always have potential, especially when they are backed by a big corporation. And finally, it's not that hard to learn. Compared to let's say Angular or React, where they have, where if you come from a .NET uh, space or .NET tech stack, it will be a lot more difficult for you to understand them. Learning Blazor is actually kind of easy, um, especially if you're Rayno C Sharp, and it's just a bunch of components and conventions. If you come from the other side, you will have to learn C Sharp, but 
you will recognize some familiar concepts in Blazor as well. So it's kind of a nice middle ground between the two. It's, and especially if you're from a .NET, uh, from a .NET background. So that's going to be my video today. That's going to be just a Blazor video on why you should learn Blazor, 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 Blazor. Like and subscribe. Peace out.